Long time don't win, that's why this is so big for us. We won last time uh, World Cup like in 2010, but we think we won World Cup last time like 2019 when the referee just taking our win. Uh, but this is our opinion. You can watch this point against Houston Heat when the uh, referee decides who won. We thinking we won because uh, like uh, referee on the buzzer, he said you clear and we think oh, yeah, we, we already go to celebrate but after like different referee come and say no, you guys lost because you have penalty. That's why this is the uh, main tournament for us. I want my players come back and we show what we can do, yeah, and we show our paintball. World Cup this big for us. I'm not afraid to be who I was made to be. I feel amazing, ain't no restraining me. Open the cage. Oh, this what you came to see. I'm a masterpiece. This how I had to be. They looking mad at me. Don't turn into a casualty. I'm a savage. Tell them get at me. I can't believe in the eyes of giants. Wage war with Goliath. Cast off to Orion. I promise this moment is mine. We did it all by the sun. Welcome back, 2021 NXL World Cup. Four days of competition here in Orlando, Florida. Matty Marshall with Rich Telford. This next set should be a good one. San Diego Dynasty taking on AC Diesel. Houston Heat taking on the ML Kings. Both Dynasty and Houston Heat have a chance to win. If they win the World Cup, they will win the series title as well as four teams that have that opportunity. Dynasty with a big win at the last event. AC Diesel, though, definitely needs to pick it up. They underperformed at the last event, taking 14th place. So we're expecting bigger things here as they are in the brackets. Dynasty Aftermath, AC Diesel, Ironman, and AC Dallas. Also in the set, Houston Heat, who won the second event after not making Sunday. So a redemptive moment for them as they pretty much murdered everyone at that event except for Level. Uh, but just a big win for them. They lost uh, early on yesterday on, at the last event on Sunday. And to take on the ML Kings, and Ridge, the ML Kings are a scrappy, hungry, young team looking to prove themselves out here. If they could find a way to beat Houston Heat, it would be absolutely massive for their chances here. What are your thoughts on uh, these two matches in this set? Let's start with Dynasty and AC Diesel. Uh, that's a question mark for me, for sure. Uh, I saw Dynasty practicing a little bit. Um, obviously, Diesel's a, a, an amazing team, but struggled a little bit the last event. So it, these first few points will be the tell of the, that match. In the other match, obviously, Houston Heat, one of those top three teams that have won Cup for the last couple of years. Um, look for them to do pretty well in that match. Yeah, Houston Heat has won. Uh, they won two World Cups in a row. Uh, last year, it was San Diego Dynasty, but 18 and 19, it was Houston Heat. Always performs very well at the World Cup. But, you know, just it, it, you're starting out against ML Kings as the lowest ranked team in their bracket, but still a situation where knowing you've dropped to a lower ranked team before already this year in the prelims. And Houston Heat sometimes doesn't get off to the fastest yeah. start. Typically in the prelims, though, last two events, they've been pretty good. No, no pressure on ML Kings, though, right? I mean, uh, you the, pressure's, the pressure's really all on Heat, which gives them a, you know, a slight advantage. What I was thinking uh, about what you said earlier, though, is I can't remember a World Cup where there's been four teams that could all basically control their own destiny and win win the world championship is th the thing with the ml kings though is they're sitting at 19th place overall so if ac dallas finds a way to make sunday and the ml kings have a terrible event maybe they might be the team getting relegated so that is the pressure that the ml kings are feeling here for sure well i mean obviously you want to go out and do your best at every event you, you know the team is obviously at a, p a point where you start and you're trying to grow towards being the best team in the world and they're just along that pr that that path but they're in the beginning of their progression to me, this is the best that they've looked, but they still have a long way to go. Yeah, this game is brought to you by the Field One Force. As San Diego Dynasty have been shooting their premier markers here, as they each have signature series two as both well, and they're all different. So both teams are dropping their first uh, Drito attacker, Matty. Yeah, it looks like Ryan Greensman going to be taking the first walk. And don't really see uh, him die early. It looks like they get shot on Boginski too, as well. And then another body coming off right now as Mark Johnson takes the walk. Four on three advantage. Back. So four on three, yeah, advantage here for San Diego Dynasty. They have D1. 
And uh, also, Urena here in the snake one position. They got a body out behind him. And then Marcelo Morgat. I love the blonde hair here for World Cup for Marcelo to do a little double take there. Is Marcelo going to do a little tactical retreat with that death of Greenspan? And then here comes big move up and over the top. Is Did he get him? Alex Frazier, the young sensation, and he does. So what a beautiful move there. Just gets a shot on BJ Henningberg. So the MVP from the last event continuing to stun out here. That kind of blows it open. Well, and Alex went to bunker out the 50 because they had told him the 50 was hot. Then he wasn't there. He found the next guy and got him anyway. Blake Yarber also into D4 off of that chaos, chaos caused by Alex Frazier. Arena trying to finish things out here. And this after after uh, kind of softening the lineup with those first couple kills. Yeah, I think it's a three on one here, Matt. Frazier and Dynasty making the most of it. I mean, it was a pretty close to start things out. Started off full on four, then another that quick death there for Mark and then after that man just beautiful job by Alex Frazee and a good job by Blake Marcelo and Mike Urena to close out this point here for San Diego Dynasty put the first one on the board you know it looked like Alex had some wheels on him too when he stood up there to make that move he looked pretty quick I yeah. talked to him it was great uh, when they were practicing and I was like hey man I was like unfortunately you know that last event you basically took the whole team on your shoulders and carried them to that victory I'm like, so if you don't win this event, they're going to be super pissed at you. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. He's like, so I got him good. He's like, I didn't even go to practice. He's like, it was Halloween, man. I wasn't not going to go home trying to treat him with my kid. I was like, that's amazing. He's like, I just told one of those guys, you can practice all you want, but I'm going to come home and take my spot. I was like, go get him, Alex. Yeah, maybe he should just go get, get him, pra buddy. more practices then because uh, that looked uh – that was, a, that was a big move. I mean, he came ba basically from the back corner bunker here on the snake side, but Red, he read it perfect. I mean, he knew exactly you, where. You get to a point where practice just makes you worse, and Alex is at that point. Yeah, and I couldn't quite see if he thought that Henningberg was at the 50, he, but. It looked like it. It looked like he did, but he immediately changed direction, and he's like, I know this guy's over here somewhere. <laughs> There's and definitely someone down. over here, yeah. ML Kings, Houston Heat, first point for both of these teams here at World Cup. Houston Heat starting from the red side. And ML Kings in the maroon and white black jerseys over there from the blue side. And ML Kings do have a couple of good attackers, a good a couple of young good attackers are on their team, Maddie. If they can get those guys up to those 50s early, they will have a chance. So they're going to get Betancourt, one of their big uh, big offensive weapons here, up into Snake 2 pretty quick here, Rich. They're going to be losing two bodies real fast, though. So On the D side. Not ideal here. So I think that's Connor Kelly and maybe Peterson taking the early walk. Yeah, tough break drop here. Drop another two on five now, Matty. Three bodies. Looks like Navarro walk, takes the walk, and then Bentcourt eats up Moorhead. Actually, I think he got protected from the inside, but just two bodies left alive for the ML Kings as Tyler Harmon takes over the attack for Ryan. Tyler Harmon to the 50-yard line. Mishka live in the center of the field at the wedge. And then there goes Bentcourt. So just one body left alive as Houston Heat with the yeah, full court press here. There. Mishka goes in and trades out with them as Ronnie Dizon alive over there on the D side. So good job by Dizon, Mishka, Moorhead with that Ma move there, Tyler. And then, yeah, Sam Monville also getting the start here. So playing behind Tyler. Great job. Houston Heat winning those early gunfights, the difference here. For sure. When you get up two quick bodies like that, especially on this field, when you have that pin movements up the middle on the outside, it gets real hard to live in those bunkers. A real strong point there for Houston Heat. The bloodbath continues off yeah. the break here. So and they, both, both both of these games in this set, bodies dropping early. I like Again. it. The more the better. The more the merrier. And so I, when Tyler was walking this field, I was like, if you had to say there was one key to this field, what would you say? And he's like, communication. He's like, bodies are going to get shot, and people are going to know, and people aren't going to know. Whoever figures out where the bodies are and, and how to play off of that is going to win this event. I was and like, like that all, move, buddy. move from Frazier, knowing wh which, where, where the bodies that are alive, where are they? Yep. What's the proper move? And then closing that gap at the right moment. So now it looks like Arturo going to be getting a start over there. As we don't see, uh, Frazier going to be uh, sitting down here on this yeah. one. But they also, so Blake, uh, Ryan Greenspan, Yosh Rao. And Marcelo Margot here for San Diego Dynasty. Powerful lineup there with Blake and Marcelo on the D side. Yosh probably be playing center, and then Ryan and uh, Arturo coming this way. Looks like Trillet and Challenger going towards the D side. So we've seen Ben Challenger on the snake side mostly, and then now Trillet has been around for a long time. Looks like Mark's going to try to take some ground. Mark Johnson taking a early walk again. Yeah, get caught going up to that center oh. wing. Just got shot in the, in the uh, top of the shoulder there. So it must have been a high lobbing shot coming in, either from Greenspan in the uh, four or uh, Blake Yarbrough in that center can. Clint Johnson with the big move inside Very and athletic. out and into the snake. And then that mirrors, uh, move is going to be mirrored up here by Blake Yarber. But it looks like Clint gets shot in the transition to the Yeah, 50. they were set up exactly for that, Matty. Dynasty really understands this field well because they're setting traps all over the field. And AC Dow, I mean, sorry, Diesel is just running into those zones, Matty. Dynasty losing Yosh Rao, though, as 
And it looks Blake, great move there from Blake. Again, really understanding the field well. Crawls out to the tape where there's no bunker, waits for the snake guy to wrap, and immediately blows him in half. Blake's really been, good play there. Blake's always been good, but he the, he's really refined his creativity out there. And you know he's what I think it is? so good this year. He's been coaching, right? And when you start coaching, you know, like in martial arts, when you get your first black belt, that means you know everything. But when you get your second black belt, that means you can teach other people up to that level of black belt because so you, you fully understand everything. And Blake's getting to that point as a coach where he's fully understanding not just his role in, in the in the game, but the whole all the roles. And it really does help Dynasty because Blake can now can play anywhere. We saw him play at in Sacramento, as you might be seeing a replay here, but we saw him play out of position, playing the two or the three and thriving there. Mike Urena did the same thing. He's yeah, he's kind of thriving wherever he goes because he understands it. So, so here's well. that uh, Johnson shot in that transition, and Blake was there at perfect timing, had his gut up for that. And then Arturo's also gonna filter in. See, so watch him crawl out to the tape. There's no bunker out there. <laughs> And Blake does. Blake doesn't really play the snake. He's not really a snake player. Yes, but he does. Just, he's right there. No, I that's know. The but that's mat. what's so impressive he's about Blake Yarber. Their snake. Blake Yarber has been, you know, came up as a D side player. We saw him win an MVP uh, as a center player, and then now showing his skills over here on the snake side. So it's re looking really good for Dynasty if they can get Blake to be that versatile. So now jumping in, Houston Heat one point lead, 13:42 to go. Now Chad George, one of the best in the business in the snake side, two bodies dropping early for the ML Kings. Two on five here, Maddie. Houston Heat with five bodies last, left alive. ML Kings with back center, snake cake only. Both of those guys trapped in the middle. Nothing they can do to get out. Houston Heat's gonna easily win this point. They shoot another, only one player left alive now in the uh, Dorito Tower. H Tyler Harmon senses it, just starts ghosting up the field. Chad George sees it, starts flying down the snake side. And that is gonna do it. Complete control here in the first two points for Houston Heat. Not one chink in their armor so far. Yeah, Houston Heat looking pretty good. Playing that pocket with four bodies and getting one guy outside on the Drito or one guy outside in the snake. So it gets the best of both worlds. They get out on one side and they control the other tape. And it, it does look like everyone getting spins early on. So Coach uh, Todd Martinez is just getting everyone in the mix here in these first couple points. Uh, Nico Hyde, Devin Stewart in there, Chad Boucher in there as well too, just keeping everybody fresh. Let's check in again with Lauren Kelly. Thanks, AC Diesel is down two points early here against Dynasty, but they said they're not really worried yet. They said they know, obviously, Dynasty is a veteran team, but they have got some weapons of their own. Clint Johnson, Mark Johnson, BJ Henningberg, they're just trying to put it together to figure out how to match Dynasty's aggression so far. Yeah, and there's still a lot of time left, so yeah. just this, this field looking like it's going to be a bloodbath off the break. So we'll see yeah. if Diesel can match, though. They do have the weapon. I, I love the weapons AC Diesel has. They have, all those guys have proved themselves that they can play at that elite level. It's just, you know, can they do it consistently? That's been kind of their issue. Yeah, and I don't think the issue is matching the aggressiveness of Dynasty because Dynasty is shooting Ace, uh, Diesel out on the attack as they go forward into attacking. So Dynasty's getting the zones. They're getting the guns up first. Yeah. Diesel losing their first player on the Drio side. Yeah, Baginski getting eaten up, trying to get out wide, and it looks like they are going to be getting Again, a shot Greenspan on. dies early. Yeah, so Ryan taking the early walk, but here comes Urena. Urena comes through, bunkers out, BJ Henningberg, and then Yosh Ralph filters in to the brick here in the snake. That's a nice move. Here comes Clinton Johnson, also is going to get into the snake. He's going to get up a little bit farther here. He's going to get into the snake, too. Yeah, so this is going to be the classic tale of, of the snake side over here, though, Matty. So Clint Johnson gets over here completely by himself with uh, a quarter player. Oh, he gets lucky and shoots the corner out. Yeah, he gets the shot on Alex Frazier. Clint Johnson winning that snapshot battle. But here comes Josh Rao making the move into the brick. Oh, he gets Josh too. While Clint Johnson pulls this team, this point back for Diesel with two key kills. I was just about to say that Dynasty is going to show why to, why you can't have a two body or one body advantage over here on the snake side. But Clint nice, Johnson pulls it out. Nice little three pack here for Clint Johnson. As uh, you know, after the big move from Urena, Heat, if they want to get back in this match. Yeah, well, and difference there is that, like you had talked about, Diesel was finally able to keep enough bodies. They still lost one over there, but yep. they were able to keep enough bodies, and they beat him in the chaos because Clint Johnson just stepped up and had a big point. So we're going to need to see that. I mean, yeah, it's a team game, but at some point in time, your hero's got to be the hero, and that was Clint Johnson in that point to keep him in this game. Now Houston Heat has looked flawless through two points. Mel Kings, like you said. What is their answer? They have to try to keep bodies alive. They've been getting murdered here on the break. Yeah, and my concern is, you know, as a young team, if they keep doing the same thing, then they can't really expect to have a different result, right? There's, their breakouts are looking very, very similar. They're playing defensively in the pocket early on. They're not controlling Houston Heat. Bencourt gets outside there early. That's good. 
Bencourt getting here into Snake 2, but it looks like Ryan Moorhead's going to be the first to go. And he's going to get almost to the, he gets to the 50, and then Bencourt gets eaten up in the transition. And again, Houston Heat was sitting there waiting for them to make that move. So as he moved forward, because Houston Heat already had that position, he was able to just wrap around and shoot him, no problem. Ryan Smith right behind Ryan Moorhead. Ryan Smith's been so impressive, earning a starting role here on Houston Heat. Ryan Moorhead, former MVP at World Cup, thrives at this tournament. Yeah, Smith in a great position here. If the snake corner gets dinked out, he can go run three guys down because he's in there, snake brick, and no one knows he's there yet. Yeah, so three bodies here on the snake side for Houston Heat as Tyler Harmon is up and over the top of his spot, just rolling his gun. A little and tactical retreat, maybe setting a trap here as Ryan Moorhead digs back in his snake two. Yeah, no sense of urgency, right? They're already up by two points. You know, they're, they're kind of in cruise control. They're, they have no th sense of threat from ML Kings. ML Kings, although they have four bodies out there, they're all in defensive positions. They've got no one in offensive position, so they're just stuck back here waiting to get dinked out one at a time. Ryan might have got back because he's, uh, he's doing surgery on his gun Rich, too, man. I was thinking the same thing. Ryan got back <laughs> to that spot and then had to squeegee his barrel, so it might have been a pretty smart move here from Ryan as yeah. they shoot another body. I think that's Kelly coming off from that D side. A three on five advantage here again for Houston Heat. They've got snake corner, Drita one, and the uh, center wing. Houston Heat has basically all the other bunkers. Oh, looks like Tyler might be getting a check here, though. He looks like uh, he's okay. Ryan, Ryan Smith. Oh, no, Tyler was Oh, oh yeah, Ryan Smith got checked, oh, too. Oh, sorry, I can't see Yeah, but well, both of them are still alive. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Team. Mishka moving up on the trio side now. He's been playing the defensive Ooh, position over there. Ridge, Tyler Harmon catches one rare early death here for Tyler Harmon, but you see on your screen Ryan Smith inside and then uh, Moorhead out wide, and he destroys the player trying yeah. to come and get him. Is Kyle Berry trying to, to counterattack here, not able to do it. Great move Moorhead. by Kyle, just got caught. Yeah, Moorhead on the attack, eats up that center player and stays alive through the chaos. So great job by Ryan Moorhead. And uh, Ryan Smith as well, too. Yeah, I know Charlie's a tactician, but uh, Charlie, I, I feel on this field your tactician is wrong. I think you need to get outside on this field. You guys are getting stuck in the pocket and paying the toll. Well, they were trying to get outside early, but getting eaten up. One guy will not be enough. You need five guys. It doesn't work. You got to go away from the bridge. It's just not working. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it, giddy up, and go. Or, you know, you can also release to the center of the field. But if you play in that pocket and you allow Houston Heat or any of the other top teams to get outside on you, you're just playing a disadvantage the whole time. ML Kings need to not get frustrated right now. Yeah, they're down some points, too. No, they need to get frustrated. Point. I couldn't disagree with you more. They need to get focused. Still a word but, uh, that starts with an F. But they need to get focused right now. They need to not. Look, there's a lot of time on the clock. You've got to understand that the principle on this, this field is the same. Let's look at this replay here. See, uh, you know, Smith and Moorhead just playing real solid that entire point. I mean, Moorhead goes up to the 50, tactical retreats, cleans his gun, gets back in there, a couple kills for him. Smith playing, you know, real smart up that center, just filling in, filtering uh, right where he needed to be to, to help out Ryan. And yeah, Heat's continuing to look really good in the pits right now there with Houston Heat. Jumping into this next point though with Dynasty and Diesel. A little bit different situation here. Diesel, Cliff Johnson, yeah, able to put that point on the board here for his squad. Very similar breakouts. Dynasty kind of sitting back at this point. They did get Mikey Arena up to the snake. Diesel loses their first player going to the center. There's only four left now. They got three snake side, one Drio side. Mark, Mark Johnson uh, alive in this one, though, and gets up into the brick in the snake. Arena already at snake two. And here comes Henningberg getting into snake one. Yeah, and see where the last point, Dynasty had the advantage. On this point, Diesel has the advantage. They have three guys against two guys over here on the snake side. So if they can just keep Dynasty from pushing down the Doritos and win the Battle of Attrition over here on the snake side, they have a really good chance of winning this point, Matty. Yeah, Dynasty making a couple moves. They're actually three separate moves, all to put themselves in position. Yeah, and that's what they cannot have happen because Dynasty is in a two-on-one advantage on the Doritos side, where Diesel only has one guy playing defensively against two guys. He just took a hard bounce off the head, forces him to look inside. Nobody looking Doritos side now at all for uh, Diesel. Well, we've seen the potency of that D side early on in that first match. Marcelo in a pretty good spot in the middle. And here comes the move past the 50-yard line. Johnson, Johnson, gonna retreating. Johnson yeah, had to do a tactical retreat. He can't live at that spot. And he might have got caught in the transition. Nope. No, it looks like he's clean. But got here lucky. comes that push from Dynasty on that D side of the field. Marcelo Margot. Yeah, he's hit and, got the, yeah, he's got, penalty, hit and penalty got the penalty. Johnson got hit and got the penalty. Penalty on Johnson. That's not going to help out Diesel's chances. Here comes Grayson Gladstone actually playing against his former squad. And he runs down Mike Urena. Ooh. Then here comes Ryan Urena Greenspan. could have got a flag on that one. He got lucky. Greenspan able to clean things up from that D side and trade it out, but that still leaves the new uh, kid's Alex last Frazier event. Yeah, the new alive. kid's last event, Alex Fraji. Yeah, but is it is it down to a one-on-one, -on -one or I think that might be I think do it's it. two on nobody. Yeah, I think it's, okay, yeah, two on no one. There's body still alive with 
uh, Blake over there on the D side and Alex Frazier with Dynasty. So Dynasty going to take a three to one lead here. As yeah, and they're looking back. <laughs> Look at oh man, crazy dragging oh it man, in there. Crazy. Somebody get that man a cane or a walker, a wheelchair. Regardless, great Alex job by Alex. Alex is great job me by so Blake. Happy. Let's check in with Lauren Kelly. Thanks. Yeah, going into this next match, that was an early death for Tyler Harmon during that last point. He came off the field apologizing to Coach Todd Martinez, but Coach Todd said that it wasn't his fault. Both Ryan Moorhead and Ryan Smith were looking in the same direction on the field. Someone needed to be watching the wire so they could protect Tyler. So they're trying to tighten up those few small things, but feeling good so far. One thing that you do see all of these top teams do that the up-and-coming teams don't do as much, when you're looking at the pits, right now with, uh, with uh, Ryan Smith and Mishka Kiesnev. They're discussing little tiny beats of Manishka, the game. Yeah, Manusha. The, the little interesting tidbits that you, so constant conversation. All the top teams, they come in, even if they won the point, they're still discussing Especially angles, if they won the point. We're talking variables. How they can get better the next point, right? Because that's what it's all about. Ooh, Houston Heat losing one and then drawing a penalty. So three on five advantage for ML Kings. First chance they have to win a point here in this match at World Cup. Oh, Tyler Harmon gets shot. Two on five advantage now. Animal Kings lose two players, though, now, so only three on two. Oh, the little guy goes through, gets Chad George. Three on one advantage or three on nobody? Yeah, Donaldson coming Donaldson's through. Donaldson's not messing around, bro. He, yeah. Honestly, he impressed me at, at, in the practice that we had against them because he was the one guy that was constantly, hey, man, how do I do this? Hey, listen, I'm struggling. What do I do? Well, they've been rolling more with Betancourt, and I feel rightfully so, but the, the reps that Donaldson has gotten, I feel that... I, that he's 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 got a chance to be a real solid attacker because occasionally he does shine like we just saw here in this one as there he is walking off the screen and uh yeah, yeah i mean he's he's this is one of the things with ml kings you know they, they have offensive weapons yeah they just need to develop them yes right and, 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 if, they, and if they can keep them all on the same yep. team yep and keep keep them there for long enough they'll be good so signs of life from the ml kings nice job by donaldson and, Put one and on the board, and maybe they should spin him again because Betancourt has not been getting it no, done over here. To me, Donaldson's the guy over there. Betancourt's just a head case. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell him you said that. <laughs> do. Yeah, he knows. Uh, so, Diesel, uh, to me, Maddie, it seems like they're doing the same kind of very similar game plan. And to me, down by two or three points, you got to kind of change that up a little bit, right? <sighs> yeah, it's, it's just a little less survivability here for Diesel. A little bit more concise moves. Uh, that D side's a little bit stronger right now. Diesel's been getting shut down a bit on that D side and uh, losing too many bodies. So now they're gonna put Ben Challenger over here on the snake side, and it looks like first body to drop again from that yeah. side here and for uh, Diesel. I do like the fact that they attack, though, with their first two guys, Maddie. I think the problem, though, is now these last three guys need to get in the game, right? They've got the two, three. Now the three does fill out to the corner. That helps. Oh, Dynasty dropping two bodies and getting a penalty, dropping three bodies here. Ryan Diesel's Green. right back so in this match. Like Ryan Greenspan dies, and then Arturo gets shot and gets a penalty, and now Ben Challenger, with no one in front of him, is going to have a real easy time, most yeah. likely, to try to pinch out Blake, Blake who's Blake's just like, wait, what just happened? How did we lose three bodies in 10 seconds over here? You guys are terrible. Tough situation here for Dynasty with that penalty. Really opens the door for Diesel to try to close the gap, make it a one-point match. They have to close clean. Gladstone up. Past the 50 here to help. Challenge a good shot, Maddie. That's a tough bend. Cannot die in that spot. That's the spot you cannot die in in this situation. And there goes Marcelo. He gets peeled off. So just one on three now. Yeah, so just Blake here at the tower, and he's going to get run down. So Grayson playing against, again, his former squad. And uh, he trades out, it looks like, with Blake. But Out of still time two left. Two bodies left alive. One point match. Here for Diesel. Yeah, one point match. I mean, just a gift here for Diesel with that penalty. Please. But they made the most of it. Only slight issue is you know, if you're Ben Challenger, can't really die in that spot in a high body situation. I mean, it doesn't hurt him there because that, there well, are so many bodies. True, but, but. Generally speaking, yeah. Yeah, if you have, if there's no one in front of you, but he just saw the blood in the water. Yeah, sure. Saw the blood so in the water. For me, though, what I would rather have him do is dive in their snake and go forward, drawing Blake's hopper with him so the second guy can come in and get that kill. I also wouldn't mind a death like that if they had two minutes left and they needed two that's points true. to tie yeah, eight and minutes that's left. what that type of death but with that that's much time left again when you have an up because ben has been ben challenger has been very impressive in when he's some on he's on there. yeah and then uh i mean he really kind of took over the rinse of what was that second event i think uh as kind of lead attacker for ac diesel 
And they have a lot of guys that can play that spot, which makes Diesel harder to scout. And you saw Challenger go on the D side. So, you know, Mark Johnson and crew have a lot of weapons to work with as far as versatility is concerned. But, and I don't want to beat up on Ben too bad, but I just Ryan know how Murray, good he the break. Be Four on four, Maddie. Dude. Three on four, Maddie. Three on four, yeah, just to. The, the, the MLK has got to find a way to at least keep four bodies alive. He's yeah. been getting beat up on the break here. Donaldson was able to run to that center wedge and shoot Ryan Moorhead on the run, so that was a great shot by him, but unfortunately he lost two bodies before behind him, and now they've let Tyler Harmon in the snake uncontested. They don't even know he's there. A little bit more conservative here for Houston Heat. After losing Ryan, they still have three bodies trapped in the center. They get Harmon up, though. Harmon doing a good job of getting into snake, too. He's going to get some help with Chad Boucher. Yeah, Chad fills out, which is a nice fill. Now he's moving up to that wing. That wing, that brick right there is good because he can protect Tyler and he can also look to Rito's side if he needs to. Yeah, so Har uh, Tyler getting up into the 50-yard line. Here, Chad Boucher also moves up into the brick right behind him. It's a good field position on the snake side. Here comes Mishka. Mishka, so this is another thing. The ML Kings have let Houston Heat after kind of trapping him in the center. Mishka might have a hit on his hopper, though. Rub. Looks like it's going to be rub. They're going to pull it off. Donaldson takes the walk, gets shot inside. Yeah, this point's over. ML Kings should just concede. The Heat just doing a better job of filtering up the field. Uh, yeah. Not a great job of zone control, Rich, here for He's the MLK. so good that if the other team beats him outside of the pocket, they're fine. They can still transition out. You know, the damage is the same way. They're so good. They're so seasoned. They're not going to panic. They can sit in the middle with four or five bodies and dink a guy out and make some moves outside, where most, where most teams are forced into making a mistake in that situation. Kyle lasted as long as he could in that corner, but it really wasn't going to help the team any, so might as well just concede at that point and give themselves a little bit more time to work with. Houston Heat looking real, real good. There were 40 bodies left to alive. Mishka, Ronnie Dizon, Chad, yeah, Tyler Harmon. Yeah, I really like the fact that even though, like, Harmon was getting it done over here. He had a really good move up in the snake and was it filtering up the field and showing some offense. And once the gun shifted to him, ML Kings just couldn't keep any zone control. So even though he did start in the pocket a bit, had those four bodies, they were able to filter everyone out. No problem, and up. No problems there. Took over all the great spots, and ML Kings just kept getting dinked, kept getting shot out of spots, and just didn't have the offense to match. Yeah, so now one point game here with Diesel and San Diego Dynasty. Dynasty with a slight lead, and let's check in again with Lauren. Thanks, doesn't look like Blake Yarber's going out for this point, but when he does, Grayson Gladstone better watch out in the pit. Marcelo Margot said that Grayson bunkered Blake Yarber after the point was over, so they want to go shoot him up. Ooh, maybe a little bit of bad blood there here. Now it looks like uh, Ben Challenger gonna get shot off the break for AC Diesel. Here starting on the red side, this one. Here comes Clint Johnson, he gets into the snake. Both teams have dropped a body. Body coming off from that center of the field here for Dynasty. And it looks like that's Alex Frazier taking the walk. Dynasty filtering up the field. Josh Round proves his position. Clint Johnson gets the outside center. the snake map. Johnson into snake two. No one in the snake currently here for San Diego Dynasty. Unless they do they no, I don't think they do because you're Mikey now. Yeah, Mikey Arena gets into the snake. Yosh filters up the field again. Another body coming off for Diesel AC down Diesel. Two, yeah, the survivability is just kind of tough right now for Diesel. I mean this game's close, but four on two here though. Dynasty is doing a little bit better. And see, these gunfights. Yeah, and Diesel figured out that it was a four on two, so their back snake guy has spread across the field, and that's something that a lot of teams are going to struggle out here. If you're not playing both sides of the field, Maddie, you're in big trouble because sometimes you're going to lose a tape, and if you if the other team figures it out before you figure it out, you're going to lose that point. Here comes Clinton Rich. Comes down, he shoots Mikey, but then gets eaten up by Yosh. Yosh was in a really good spot to try to protect that move. Yeah, Yosh was on that gap, so. And knowing that they had a pretty high body situation, so Grayson was the last player left alive. Didn't catch any extra bonus balls though, so Dynasty being nice. Yeah, so apparently Dynasty doesn't care if you bunker Blake, if, if all the other teams are listening. I mean, for me, I would take it super personally because I like Blake a lot. But I mean, if you don't care about Blake guys, I guess it's no big deal. Here we go, ML Kings, Houston Heat. And Houston Heat looking Mingo's going and, out. Uh, like one of the top teams again out here. Yeah. And really good in the prelims for, uh, well, except for the first event since then, the prelims. It was a little frustrating for Heat fans, though, at the last event because, you know, Heat was obviously the best they were team. hot. Yeah, Heat was the best team in the prelims, and it wasn't even close. Uh, they beat up on X Factor. They beat up on AC Dallas. They beat up on DMG. Three Mercy Rule wins in a row. They won by two against Aftermath, undefeated going into Sunday. But then they play Rubbo in the quarterfinals and get knocked out in the quarterfinals. Still end up taking fifth, so they're still in the hunt for the series title. But they didn't really have to struggle to with their first four matches, Maddie, and we talked about that possibly putting them at a disadvantage because they're not making those same adjustments that the other top teams are when they're playing against the other top teams, right? Yeah, and again, there are three teams that have a chance, both uh, Impact, Infamous, and Dynasty. 
Heat is has it needs it needs a little bit more for the series title because they're sitting at 446. But Dynasty Infamous and Impact, regardless of what anyone else does, if they win this tournament, they will win the World Cup and the series title. Love it. Heat, Heat has a chance too, but they need one of those three teams to get knocked Knock out, out or they actually need all those teams to, to get, get knocked out, really to get knocked out, to not to go to the finals. Chad George, 50 Snake. George moving up to uh, Greg, moving up to the center wing there, looking Dorito side. There's only three ML King players left alive. Kyle Barry in the corner gets dinked out. Two ML King players left alive. Back center is now Mingo getting dinked out, I think. Only one player left alive. I think it's Greg in the middle there. He's about to get paid the toll. Yeah, he gets just oh. decimated by Smith. Apparently Smith does not like him very much. Chad George also alive there wow. on the snake Man, side. Man, they towards with Greg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 13, 14 hits that I can count, and not one complaint. Good job, Greg. Way to take it like a man. Yeah, he barely flinched, too. We had a guy in practice get shot twice and had a tangent. Like, oh, my God, did you see how many times he Th shot me? Throw, throw a tantrum? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I dude, I, it's one and two. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, you didn't even get shot three times. We what wouldn't even count that in practice. Well, let's get a look here at this final closeout. So... Yeah, so ouch, there's ouch, Greg, ouch, and there's ouch, Ryan ouch, just ouch, putting ouch. it on him. I think he caught a couple extra from other no. players as well, too. Yeah, I'm sure he caught randoms from everybody. Yeah. So Smith comes through and just, yep, stays gunned up on him pretty much that entire time. That is a little bit excessive, uh, but that just tells me that Ryan Smith is really hungry to win another World Cup. If he can find a way to you win this want one, it. it will be three World Cup wins in four years for them. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. That's like aftershock level of World Cup dominance yeah. in this era of the game. Five on five breakout, Matty. First one today. Oh, I mean, in this match, sorry. Diesel, first one to the snake. Dynasty playing defensively over here in the snake. Got their snake uh, insert bunker looking inside. Henningberg runs into one for another uh, transition. So another body coming off. Diesel. Four on five advantage here for D Dynasty. Like Mark little, Johnson retreating. A little tactical retreat here for Mark. He's going to probably try to fill out this way because he knows he lost the body this way. Definitely be smart here. Dynasty really in no hurry to move forward right now, just kind of tucking their spots. Yeah, I think this is one of those points where they're playing these positions, Matt, to see how much they can control the field from these four positions. I think they feel like they can get to these four positions alive, yeah. and they want to see if they can get here and control the field as long as they can. They've got a two-point advantage in only six minutes, so they know if they need to go play a fast point, they can, but they don't know if they can play a long, slow point from here or not, and that's what they're trying to figure out. Well, doing it nicely so far, and everyone just talked as tightly as they possibly can, and now Frazier's going to scurry out wide. I was going to say, Eggs in order clean. to do it, Eggs has to get out to the corner because he's the only guy that can keep Ben Challenger from that 50 snake wrapping. Yeah, and then we were looking at the D side, but yeah, here's the look for uh, for Challenger, who's at the 50-yard line here. Body finally getting peeled off, and it's Blake, so not able to tuck in enough there in this defensive yeah, there's a, for there's a, a dynasty. Yeah, there's a bounce shot off that Drita one into the uh, side of that tower, Matty. So when, sometimes when you see that guy walking out, it's because he got bounced off the Drita one. Dynasty now loses another player attacking from Drita one to Drita two. Yeah, it's Greenspan. Greenspan, he's to tighten things up a little bit here. He's our World Cup MVP, but here comes Alex Frazier. Alex Frazier comes through, gets Ben. But then he gets chewed up by Mark, it looks like. Yeah, Alex is getting pissed because he's getting the guys pretty early, and the guys are still getting a chance to turn their guns and put a ball on him and, and force him to trade. And he's you know, smart about it. He's not flipping out during the points, but then after the point, he goes out and talks to the referee like, hey, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm shooting the guy first. And then he spins his gun and shoots me, and uh, I think that's a penalty. You know, And that's the way you do it, because then when the referee, you kind of get that plant in the referee's mind. Then when he sees it again, he's like, oh, he's right. That is a penalty. Here we go. Mark Johnson moving up to the 50 snake, getting killed there on the tape. Nice job by Mark Johnson to filter yeah. up at the appropriate moment here and get that kill on yeah. Mike Urena. Yep, plenty of time left. This is going to win this point, only be down by one point. It's a two on one. But so rich, this we'll, we'll see here if they can get the shot in Marcelo. Now Marcelo is a master at low body situations. Not going to be able to get it done this time. Is a nice field spread by Mark Johnson here. Uh, but and that's so that's Ben Challenger over there. I was wondering. So who was at the 50 then for AC Ooh. Dallas who I got bumped? Yeah. Regardless, they're kind of they're putting Ben everywhere. I really like that. Makes him less scoutable. Great job. That's an uh, excellent point after a couple early deaths for Mark to start out this game. is That was a great point for him. Uh, methodical but aggressive. Gets the kill to kind of close things out. But so this is another instance where, just like we saw Level in that uh, in that first match, they still had a great win. But 
defense not working here for San Diego Dynasty. And it's not the, it's not the teams, Matt. It's the field. <laughs> this field does not reward you for hiding. This field re rewards you from taking real estate. Out of control. all of the fields we've seen so far this year, this would be the one that maybe it would work some of the time. It just yeah. hasn't worked quite You're yet. You're right. This is the one where the back center can actually shoot at the tapes. And if you have the tower D1 and back corner on the snake side in a three on five, also a scenario Ooh. where if everyone plays well and tight and wins a gunfight or two, that you know that could be a defensive yeah. win. But yeah. so far, I really haven't seen nobody situations or defensive uh, strategies play out here on this layout. But we still got a lot of paintball to play. We're only in yep. set two. Ryan Moorhead, snake one on the break, cross forward. Chad releases to the center wing. I got snake wing. Dorito can, Dorito one, five on five. Fill out to the corner there. The Houston Heat. ML King's moving up to the uh, wing on the Dorito side. And the winner center wing. And the uh, snake bricks are three guys up at the 40 slash 50s. ML King's really got to stay on that gas pedal here. They need four just to tie, 7.14 to go, so enough yeah. time to work with. But th To me, this is more the style that they should be playing the field. They should have three or four guys on the 50 looking to cross, e cross up the field from the 50, control the field and protect each other, force the other guys to try to make moves, catch, catch them on their moves, make them pay. Chad with a good move up to that cube now. Snake player out into the uh, ML King corner. Snake player retreating, going back to the big brick. It's like Kyle Berry looking inside. Those two guys look from the brick in the wing there, Matty, looking inside can really control a lot of real estate. Got shots on the Drios side, shots on the snake side. Can go into the Drios, can go down the snake. A lot of, lot of opportunities from those three big bunkers in the middle. And you can really move anywhere from there, man. You can fill through the center, you can fill snake, you can fill Drito. Yeah, there's a lot of options in that center, but this is a center you, you, you have options, but you got to work for it, especially with where, uh, well, right now, Heat's looking both. Uh, both up, Moorhead yeah. and Chad Boucher are looking towards the snake side. They do have a uh, player behind them, Ryan Smith, looking inside. Now they're going to get Betcourt in the snake for ML Kings, and now they have four bodies very, pretty much on the 40-yard line. But can they break through this cross? Yeah, he's trying to get through, and Ryan Moorhead might pick up this center guy. No, he doesn't. So Chad gets caught. If he goes forward again, he's going to get Ryan. Yeah, Ryan switches his gun. Tactical retreat for Ryan. Can he make it back clean? He does. And then checks off on the inside. That forces a tactical retreat from the ML Kings, but he stays alive. Nice as, move over there, though, man. Yeah, I'm not D, sure who that was, but great move. Yeah, as Dizon makes a move up into D2. So four bodies still alive here for Heat. Yeah, a little, some tactical retreats playing out well. It's Connor Kelly. That was a nice job by Connor. Connor gets up there, gets the kill, and then comes back, knowing he can't really live from Ryan from that position. But they are going to be losing. Bad death Kyle for Kyle Yeah, that's a tough one for Kyle. Bettencourt still alive here in the snake. He comes across, gets to the brick. Ryan back into snake two, and he's looking to move up. But Betancourt may be setting a trap. Don't know if Ryan knows that Betancourt made the move inside. Looks like he did, though. He's going to wrap around and just go through and trade out. They're going to blast each other. But here comes the close. It's Houston Heat now trying to make the most of it. Here comes Nico ha or uh, Devin Stewart. Devin Stewart with a nice move over there on the D side. And the penalty going to be assessed, actually more in middle, from the D side to the middle. And yeah, no one to pull for the penalty. ML Kings might be starting with four, Matt. Yeah, so initially ML Kings having real solid positions in the center of the field from the snake side to the center wedge, four bodies, but a little too crafty. Houston Heat out there with uh, Devin Stewart and Ryan with uh, Monville and Dizon as well in the mix. So it was just a real solid point there from Devin, real solid point from Ryan. And there's Devin Stewart running off. Also, let it be known. Played, let uh, it be known. I played a big game with Devin Stewart. Woo! Easting out there. So Devin Stewart can uh, get down with the best of them playing uh, some lawless big game paintball. What's this lawless? Well, oh, he was just up in the mix and just slaughtering people. Okay. And, yeah. Is that lawless? Is there a law against that? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's like a, a, an expression, Rich. I oh. know you don't play many big games. You don't know no, nothing no. about that craziness. But, mm -mm. you know, that's fine. It's cool. Maybe one day we'll get you out there. Someday. Someday. Yeah, if, you, if you're out there and you haven't played a big game, please go out and play a big game. It's really hard not to have a, a great time when you shoot 500 people a day. Yeah. It keeps a smile on your face for weeks at a time. Dynasty and Diesel, one point advantage. Looks like Dynasty gets five alive, so does Diesel. Yeah, Diesel in this match, 420 to go and down uh, by just one, but they are going to be That's losing. the story, though, Matty. Diesel's getting walked out of their bunkers, right? I mean, they're getting dinked out of their spots. They're not getting shot on the break. Grayson Gladstone, the first to take the walk here for Diesel. That might have been, uh, yeah. 
That cross shot might have Dynasty got him. still five alive for them, and now taking some ground. Arturo Andrade here, snake side, gets a snake too. Yeah. Corral is going to move up to the wedge. Yeah, I like Yoshi's Ryan there. gets out behind Arturo. Diesel dropping another player in, challenger on Drio's side. Marcelo Morgat taking the early walk, though, for San Diego Dynasty. Yeah, if I was playing against a Dynasty, I would make Marcelo shave his head because his head is yellow and the paint we're shooting is yellow, and it's just an unfair advantage. He's actually been shot every game in the head. You just can't tell. I don't know. I like that Marcelo is throwing it back uh, <laughs> to the blonde hair for World Cup. You know, we used to do that back in the day. We and did that one I year for it. sure. Yeah, they did it one year, and remember it was like, I think Kyle Spica and everyone dyed their hair, and they had a great event, won the World Cup. Two diesel players left alive, the uh, God Bunker and the uh, Tower on the Drio side. Might be Mark Johnson and Ben Challenger. Hard to tell who's in the tower over there. Dynasty though with three over here on the Snake play side. They've got Arturo figuring out how to get in 50 Snake. Yoshi inside of him. Ryan behind him. So a lot of power over here on the Snake side for Dynasty. Concession here for AC. Good concession. Diesel with just three minutes left alive. Going to spot Dynasty another point. Now a two-point lead, but keeping them with enough time on the clock to score two. Yeah, I think that was a good concession I definitely, from Diesel. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. Because Dynasty was just going to continue to slow just, play that. Yeah, it was four on two. And they were just going to grind it out. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Mark McGinsky, the Iceman, was having some problems with this. Yeah, I th thought that was him over there. Yeah. Houston Heat now with a five-point lead, one point away from getting a Mercy Rule win. It's so hard to go out here and compete at this level. It's even harder when your paint or your gun, whatever you know, whatever it is that that game, maybe it's your goggles, you know, whatever m malfunction you get that game, and you're trying to play through that at World Cup, very challenging. Dude, how, Houston Heat, never heard past two events in the prelims, six Mercy Rule wins for them. Pretty good eight, at paintball. Eight games. Pretty good at paintball. Yeah, it looks like they're about to get another one here. ML Kings do take Dorito 3 on the break, though. Looks like me, maybe Mingo over there. Kyle Berry to the snake cube over the top on the break. Gets a kill, but gets shot. And that's what Kyle's got to do better of. He's really good at getting those kills, Matty, but he's got to do a better job of staying alive. ML Kings down to just one player left alive over there on Dorito side. He's in the Dorito 3. And here comes Chad George. And Chad shoots him, yeah. Puts the finishing touches on this Mercy Rule win for Houston Heat. So that's going to be... Seven Mercy Rule wins in nine games in the prelims the past three events. Yeah, I don't care what you say, Matt. They're pretty good at paintball. <laughs> pretty good. Not bad. And, and you know what? That's why they're one of my dark horses. <laughs> Here we go. Because they're so good at paintball. Oh, the good old-fashioned Rich Telford, Houston Heat. This Edison is the impact dark horses. season of the dark horses. <laughs> the season of the dark horses. So now we'll have two minutes in between points for the remainder of this Dynasty Diesel match. There's not a lot of time left on the clock. Just a little over three minutes to go. 3.06. Thirty seconds. And 30 seconds to go before the start of this next point. Two-point lead for San Diego Dynasty. And you know, Dynasty has looked really good in this one. Diesel fighting back a little bit here and uh, not looking terrible, but needs to tighten it up. Dynasty's been a little bit better across the board, shooting a little bit more off the break, a little bit more gunfight wins, and a little bit better on the moves. Yeah, I don't mean to be super critical. I feel like Dynasty isn't playing their best ball, but they are playing the field better than Diesel, which is giving them an advantage in this match. Because they've had some points where they were up on position, up on real estate, and just squandered those. And you hardly ever see Dynasty do that. Yeah. You hardly ever see them lose points where they were up on body. In this bracket, it's Dynasty, Aftermath, AC Diesel, Ironman, and AC Dallas. So it's a soft bracket. No tough teams in there. Well, Ironman played really good at that last event. I heard the Ironman have been playing really well in practice yeah. uh, leading into this event. Yeah, they looked good last so, weekend. And seeing that the Ironman are the fourth-ranked team in that five-team bracket. Another bracket of death. Potentially. <laughs> it sounds like it. It really depends on how good AC Dallas it's just, plays. It, it's, it's if everyone's playing the way they're supposed to play, right? Well, AC Dallas is sitting at last place. They're the team that's fighting to stave off relegation. So, you know, it's it's if they if they step up and play some decent paintball, that could be the bracket of death. You know, it really just depends. You know, like when you were looking at the bracket A, impact damage mm -hmm. under energy elite level, potentially, again, bracket of death just because of how good energy elite well, level is. And you know what I say. The more brackets of death, the better. Yeah. I, I, hey, it makes it more entertaining for us, right? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Here we go. Dynasty Diesel. Diesel's got to have two points in the next three minutes. Very capable of doing so, but they've got to win the breakout and play a little more offensively. They've been struggling with both of those. At least looks like close. they got five alive, Matt. Got a close oh, game. they shot two on the break, Matty. Yeah, uh, looks like oh, no, one. just one. Yeah, one off the break here for San Diego Dynasty coming off early. It's Alex Frazier taking the walk. But Mike Urena still alive here. Snake side gets into snake, one, snake two now. But... AC Diesel already at the 50 yard line here, snake side. Yeah, Mikey Arena trying to figure out what the Diesel player in front of him is doing. Yostra gets shot out of the uh, front Dorito can over there. Three on five advantage now for Diesel. 
Run Greenspan <laughs> going to try to do some damage control. Just three bodies left alive right now for Dynasty, trying to burn clock and preserve this lead. Here comes the attack for Diesel, filtering up the field in the center and on that D side. Yeah, that's actually a good move from Mikey Arena there. Going back to Snake 1, he can protect himself better. Ryan Greenspan, great fill out to the corner now. He can keep the Snake from wrapping. This is going to cost Diesel an extra minute or two, having those guys be able to move into those two positions. Yeah, really smart move out wide for uh, Ryan, and he made it clean, and a really nice job by the tactical retreat here for Mikey Arena. But past the 50-yard line in the middle and on that D side, AC Diesel's hunting for it, trying to find a way to crack through these last three players' guns here for San Diego Dynasty. There's another 30 seconds chewed up, only less than two minutes left with two players left alive. Ryan could not stay alive. Here comes Baginski on the D side. Baginski gets all the way into their backfield, and that forces Urena into uh, an attack on this low bodies uh, with just him left alive. And so Baginski's going to get it done here for Diesel. They're going to pull within one with a minute and 41 seconds left. They got a chance. <laughs> interesting here. And they've got two minutes to go back and figure out what's their absolute best chance for going out and win this. They don't have to worry about a fast point forcing them back on the field. Good for time. Diesel to see uh, young Mark Baginski step up as the attacker on that D side. Uh, he's a hell of a player, a little inconsistent like almost all young up-and-coming players are. So night and day, though, Matt. Breakout to breakout. You go out, Diesel goes out, and he, they win the breakout. They shoot two dynasty guys, and it looks like a completely different team. I think really this field is really going to come down to, we always say this, a lot of points are won and lost on the breakout, but this field, because you lose bodies so easily, man, the breakout is so essential on this field. Yeah, and we thought that there would be a potential for some, and we still could see it, but it definitely is not looking like low body situations are, are working out for any of the teams that, are, that find themselves and there. And if they do work out, the way they work out is by going forward. If you sit back and try to dink people out, that's not working. You've got to get lucky and push through a tape. Yeah, it was hearing from almost everyone that I talked to that out of, out of all the fields we'd seen, this was could potentially be, and you know, on Sunday things are always going to slow down. We could see some low scoring games, but through two, uh, set so far and again not a lot of boring paintball yeah not a lot of boring paintball even though we have seen some blowouts but it has been blow for blow attacking paintball for and and blood bass off the the break so you know tough on the communications what do you think uh, the longest point we've had two minutes maybe a maybe, minute and a half maybe and and those were the points that we're setting records seated yeah so we have not seen any real true long points no yet. grinders for sure yeah so uh yeah it's been a fun field so far Maddie, what's AC Diesel got to do? Uh, do exactly what they just did. When because Dynasty was getting the better of them by doing what Dynasty typically does when they're playing well, shooting more bodies on the break, winning gunfights, making smart moves. Diesel waking up and starting to keep bodies alive and really doing a good job of getting into good attacking positions and making the most of those moves. You can kind of see those blow for blow tactical. Like so we're seeing traps being set. Yep. We're seeing guys really have to wait and buy their time to get through certain gaps, and and that's what Diesel has just done a little bit better here in this attempted comeback. Dynasty just needs to clock in and stay alive. Here, Dynasty yelling, yelling yellow on the pit. I mean, they're trying to key up on somebody. They do shoot. BJ yeah, on the break, yeah. though, so that might have been what they were keying up on. Five on four, advantage for Dynasty. Huge kill here for San Diego Dynasty. Shooting out BJ Henningberg. Mark Johnson staying alive, though. Mike Johnson just gets also, a bounce on the head. There's also a ton of bounce shots on this field, and Mark Johnson uh, getting shot here. So that now just three bodies left alive. No Dynasty players have walked out. And the problem for Dynasty is the three players left alive are in the back line, Matt. And they lose another one now. Yeah, Baginski also taking the walk, and then there goes Grayson. So they need to concede this point immediately. They have the long walk, and it's, it's just it's tough. It is going to cost teams a few seconds here or there. If you are, you know, the, the way that these pits are set up, they're on the back line. So right there, as we can see, you know, we're on the sidelines up 15 feet in the air. It was pretty easy to see, oh, they only have one body left alive. They should concede that point. But it took them a good three seconds to figure that out because you have to look They've got to wait until those guys, field. those four guys walk across yeah. the field before they can see them. Totally different if you're uh, on same your side. same side because then it's going to, you know, very quickly you should be able to see, oh, okay, we just have one body left alive. We haven't shot anybody. Let's concede the point and save the time. But Dynasty doing what they needed to do, isolate that first body was B.J. Henningberg, who was taking some ground, snake side. He comes off early, and now we're in the pits here at San Diego Dynasty. Looking pretty calm and composed. Up by two with one minute, seven seconds left. So I'm also wondering as far as, because we really haven't seen a situation where teams need to go full court press. Uh, the flying Yeah, the, the, the staggered attack to try to score a couple points in just a little bit of time, and now we're about to see that. What do you think is the best case scenario there? Where do you send that first guy to draw the guns, and then where are those other bodies going to fill? So you got to send two guys outside, yeah. three to one snake corner, but you can get into the other team's uh, wing over on Drio's side yeah. unmolested, and you can get into their brick unmolested, and you can also get there unseen. Uh, Holiday was doing it from damage, and uh, Greg Sewers had a couple points where he did it for Infamous, where those guys didn't win those points, but those guys were in... Uh, 
an amazing positions had the points gone the other way, they would have been there to pull it back. It does appear that because there is a lot of stuff in the center, that guys could get lost in there For in sure. these chaotic moments. Almost so every point there's bodies getting lost. Yeah, so I, I think, well, that's just in general, but even on when you have those staggered attacks come through, depending on which lane you know your opponents are looking and which way you run, could get a little lucky there, and uh, we could see some potential comebacks based in, in a situation like this. But Diesel's going to be the first to give it a, a good old solid try here yeah, yeah. In, in the pressure situation of having well, tournament refs, tournament paint. You know, obviously it's, every, it's team, every team ran these in practice to try to figure out, well, okay, well, we need a couple points, only have a minute left, what do we need to do? But they could they could potentially be playing for two 30-second points, which I would, I would try to win the breakout. And if we won the breakout, oh, they shoot eggs on the break. Four on five advantage here for Diesel. Oh, they lose their first guy, four on four. So under a minute to go here, and AC needs two. It is a four-on-four -four situation, and here comes the big move into D4 for Diesel. They're going to lock up another body and move them up the center of the field. Just don't have much time to work with here. They need two to tie. Yeah, Mikey Arena's in the snake looking inside to shut down the center of the field. Ooh, they shoot Blake Yarbrough, though. Blake Yarbrough off the, D uh, off the snake side. Marcelo's going to get shot, too. That can gets real hard to live in that. Yeah, Marcelo's done such a phenomenal job of playing those uh, really hard to play spots. So, you know, he's always in one of those bunkers of death. Yeah, Diesel, I think, is going to win this point, Matt, if they keep playing the way they're playing, but they're going to win it with not enough, enough time left. Yeah, it's the D side again, but Ryan Greenspan is going to try to eat up the attack, and he oh. does. Ryan Greenspan might have just he saved did. this point here for San Diego Dynasty. A little did. two pack here for Ryan Greenspan. Marcelo's going to get behind two. him. And a little, yeah, maybe a three pack here. I'm sure if that was uh, Ryan it was or Ryan. Mike. Yeah, it was Ryan because he got up and looked at the Drill side like, what the heck? Who just shot me? Yeah, so and great, Johnson great, great little counterattack well. here. And they're going to try to put this other point on the board for the margin. And it looks Ooh. like Urena with his wheels is going to be able to get there in time. So that's a great job by Ryan Greenspan. Also, Marcelo just to stay alive in that terrible can. Because, I mean, he, he was getting pinched in there, but able to live through it. But then also, great job by Mike Urena. Mm -hmm. Uh, to have his wits about him to realize he had enough time to get in there and hit that buzzer to get their seventh point on the board. That'll be a three-point spread and a real solid win here for San Diego Dynasty. Yeah, good match, man. Good back-and-forth game there with Dynasty and Diesel. Yeah, I'm just glad that we didn't see a blowout because the first two sets, uh, even though the level energy elite game was pretty good, but DMG blew out the Outlaws and he beat up on the ML Kings. So great job by San Diego Dynasty. It went and it ended up being a close match. They took the early momentum. Diesel started storming back in, but Dynasty closes the door on them. And uh, next up, as they burn off those last three seconds, we have the Russians taking the field and be playing the Outlaws. Russians first match, if you're just joining us. Outlaws gonna need a win here because they lost a Mercy Rule one to, uh, to DMG. And then Damage needs to do something here at the World Cup. Two 11th place finishes. They haven't made Sunday since the first event where they took third. And they're going to be playing uh, Energy Elite, who's already warmed up in that loss against Levels. So stick with us here. 2021 NXL World Cup. I'm Matty Marshall mm -hmm. with Rich Telford. And we will be back. Thank you guys so much for joining us uh, on Facebook. But we head on over to, uh, to GoSports.com. Help us out. We're trying to bring you guys the best show possible. But we need your support to do that. So head on over to GoSports. Log in. Set up an account. And watch this, the rest of these battles going down here at the NXL World Cup. See you in just a few. Ain't no restraining me, open the cage Oh, this what you came to see, I'm a masterpiece This how I had to be, they looking mad at me Don't turn into a casualty, I'm a savage, so get at me I came to look in the eyes of giants Ways for a wicked liar, cast off to Orion I promise this moment is mine, we did it all by design The World Cup is a brutal battleground at the end of the year-long struggle for the coveted series title. It is here where names of epic teams and iconic players are carved into the colorful fabric of our sports history, where teams' hopes rise and fall as the greatest pros in the world clash. An entire year of disappointment can be reversed with a clutch performance, just as a whole year's worth of work can be undone with failure. But success at the hardest event of the season ensures legendary status. 
Never has our game been as competitive as it has in 2021, with new heroes and teams emerging as threats to the existing pro paintball hierarchy. But though that is true, familiar names have again risen to the top so far this season. At the first event, Emmett's and Impact ran the table, going undefeated and looking every bit of the all-star team that they are. Then at the Mid-Atlantic Major, Houston Heat blasted themselves back into title contention, coming away with a redemptive win after missing Sunday for the first time in four years at the first event. San Diego Dynasty will defend their 2020 World Cup victory, looking even sharper than they did a year ago. The crafty veteran Alex Frazier added to his already legendary career with a brutal display of relentless aggression in Chicago to lead the team to victory. But these three victorious teams will have their hands full. Infamous has been in contention all year and is currently ranked second overall. And X Factor's new pickups performed solidly en route to a second place finish at the last event. But no one's position is safe, as there are no easy games anymore in Paintball's top division. But the rest of the professional paintball pack has sharpened their skills, and they will be charging right towards the best teams trying to carve out their own slice of glory. Watch all the battles going down at the NXL World Cup, November 11th through the 14th, only on GoSports.com.